is the greatest photograph of all time? When you web search this, you'll find a lot of photographs of eminent personalities of the history, of victories and of war, of science and of technology. But let me share my opinion on this. Back in 1990, something amazing took place in the depths of space. The Voyager 1 spacecraft has successfully finished its mission of studying the outer planets, and it was asked to turn back towards Earth one last time, at a distance of 64 million kilometers from Earth. It was asked to take a photograph of our planet, of a pale blue dot in the vastness of space. In his book, Carl Sagan had said, significance of Earth from this vantage point might not be evident, but for us, it is. He said, look at this dot once again. This is home. This is here. This is us. This resonates with us. This is all of us. Every breath, every thought, every dream, every aspiration has been depicted in a fraction of a pixel in this image. And this image, for me, is the greatest photograph of all time. When I was young, I recall reading about this one photograph in an encyclopedia named Space. As a child, I didn't understand the essence of this image, but I did find this book very interesting. It was a visual treat. It had a plethora of images of celestial wonders. It had the images of the moon, of its majestic craters, of Saturn with its stunning rings, and of the sprawling Milky Way. It was love at first sight. I devoured this book. I read in and out. I memorized every single fact about the celestial wonders, and there began my obsession with space. As years passed, from flipping the pages of this encyclopedia, I went to flipping the pages of the sky. Sky watching was one of my favorite hobbies, and it still is. It soothes me, it calms me, and it satisfies my curiosity. I love looking at the purple and orange sunsets. I love looking at the blue, azure, crisp mornings. I love looking at the terrifying ash-colored clouds during the rainy days. The sky is a notoriously pretty palette of colors. But for me, nothing, nothing could beat the deep blue color of the night sky with a splatter of stars. I found it beautiful. I found it beautiful that it was so everlasting and unchanging. I used to think, looking at the sky, that we are not the only ones who are looking at the sky this way. Our ancestors also looked at the sky at this way. And what surprised me the most was that our ancestors not just admired the sky, but they also took advantage of it. They looked at the sky and they drew constellations. They used it for navigation. They traveled uncharted seas and unexplored lands. They used to look at the sky and tell the time in the day. And they also used to look at the sky and tell the day in a year. As technology progressed, it fascinated me that we humans could develop equipment and instruments like telescopes and satellites to look deep into the space, not only to admire it, but also benefit the human society. I loved science in high school, and I loved space, and I wanted to learn more and more and more about this field. As I was learning, I, I figured out that not only can I learn about space, but also I can contribute towards it by developing satellites and rockets. And I knew that this could be a major contribution, a significance from my end. I knew I had to become a space scientist. And I thought, and I researched, and I worked hard towards it. And I finally landed in an institute, a prestigious institute, which got me to the first step of this landmark. While I was working in college, I used to work on various projects. I worked on the satellite attitude systems. I also worked on a sun and earth sensor development project. And I also worked on semiconductor physics. But one project was profound. The revolution of space was significant in the past few years. I'm not talking about the colossal satellites launched by giant space agencies. I'm talking about the small satellites. Small satellites are satellites which can be developed from weights of one kilogram to 100 kilograms. To put sizes in perspective, 
a general satellite that we use to broadcast television is about 2,500 kilograms. That is almost equivalent to two huge SUVs stacked on top of each other. But a small satellite can be of the size of a watermelon in my hand. This revolution of small satellite opened various horizons for researchers and students like you and me, where we could develop satellites without the requirement of massive clean rooms, huge equipment, and exuberant budgets. It was as if that the access of space science and space technology was democratized to general public. One such endeavor during my college life was the InspireSat1 project. The InspireSat1 project had two major payloads on board. It had the compact ionospheric probe, which helped us study the ionospheric measurements and the ionospheric dynamics of our Earth. It also had another payload called the Dual Aperture X-ray Solar Spectrometer. It studied the sun and its coronal effects. Together, these po both payloads would help us understand our Earth's atmosphere and how sun affects it. InspireSat-1 was the first satellite of our college, and it was an opportunity that I got. I was in charge of the operations of the satellite, and it was a responsibility, a big responsibility. Along with my team, we worked tirelessly day and night. We worked in the middle of the night. We worked early morning in 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and we made the satellite come true. Our team also developed a ground system, a ground station. We learned how to communicate with the satellite. We also learned how to use the satellite, operate the satellite as if it was in space. Every single step of developing the satellite and progressing in this journey was a small victory for us. And we enjoyed and cherished every single victory of while we came through this journey. But we also were ready for failures. A study in 2017 had found that from the year 2000 to 2016, only 60% of small satellites were successful. We students were prepared for failure. Let me tell you about one night when we were doing a test on the satellite, and it had prepared us for the worst that could ever come. We were planning to run a complete evaluation test of our satellite, which meant that the satellite would run for seven hours straight, and we would emulate its behavior in space. We began the test at 10 PM in the night, and things were running smoothly for a while. But as it said, horror struck at the devil's hour. Around 3.15 AM early in the morning, the satellite stopped responding to our commands. Fear struck our students. We had no clue what to do. But that didn't stop us. We stayed up all night, all morning, trying to figure out how to wake the satellite up during the early hours of dawn. And finally, at 5.30 in the morning, we were able to revive the satellite, and we completed our tests. We revived the satellite as if it had failed in space. Oh, we enjoyed, this, uh, we enjoyed this resurrection of our satellite. We enjoyed this resurrection by clicking a lot of photos with our satellite, and we were so proud of it. That one night had prepared us for not only of the failure of the satellite, but also for a failure during the launch. This satellite was planned to be launched on the PSLV, the workhorse of ISRO. The PSLV launch vehicle is known for its success. It has successfully launched 56 out of the 59 missions it had been planned for. That is a success rate of 95%. But we were prepared for the failure of the launch as well. We were already going through a previous launch failure, an unsuccessful launch of a mission, and we students were ready to take the heart pill. It is a proud moment for me to say that InspireSat1 was successfully launched on February 14th, 2022. And I can say that InspireSat1 is healthy and is working as per operation till date. This InspireSat mission was not just a success story. It's not just a scientific achievement. It is a dream realized. It is a dream realized for us students, a dream realized for me. At the age of 21, I was able to build a satellite with my own hands, take it to a launch pad, me, with my team, were able to go on top of the rocket, through to the tip of the rocket, to integrate the satellite onto the launch vehicle. It was a momentous occasion. I could never forget this moment, 
And this is how a small dream of mine was realized as it progressed. The InspireSat-1 mission is one of the 13 small satellites developed by students that have been launched by ISRO. It is the latest addition to this list, but I can promise you this won't be the last. Various researchers and students are taking this new approach towards space technology and giving a try at developing their own satellites. I want this journey of mine to be a testament of how dreams, small dreams, can change lives and how perseverance can bear the sweetest fruit. I want to end the small talk with a small anecdote of my own. You all must have heard of meteor showers. You all must have seen there's an image of it here. I kid you not, meteor showers are very rare to sight. With the speeds at which these meteors fly by, they just go within a snap. And given with the light pollution in the city bounds, it is almost impossible to spot one. I waited years, I waited months, I waited shower after shower, tried every night, every time there was a shower. And then one fine day, I saw one shooting star whiz by. It was the year 2016. It was, it was the year 2017, in the month of October. It was the Orion Nights Meteor Shower. It was a mesmerizing night. I could only see one, and I could only make one wish. From that day onwards, I always hoped to see more and more shooting stars so I can make more and more wishes. After all, that's all it takes. A wish, a lot of hope, a hell lot of patience, a tad bit of perseverance, and a little bit of frustration and downfall throughout your journey for you to launch your rocket of dreams into space and reach the stars. Thank you.